1979, a young, London-educated attorney, Maurice Bishop, took over the island in a bloodless coup. This was the first step in a march towards conflict with the United States. Nowhere in its whole sordid history have the promises of communism been redeemed. Everywhere it has exploited and aggravated temporary economic suffering to seize power and then to institutionalize economic deprivation and suppress human rights. In the Caribbean, we above all seek to protect those values and principles that shape the proud heritage of this hemisphere. Some, however, have turned from their American neighbors and their heritage. Let them return to the traditions and common values of this hemisphere, and we all will welcome the choice is theirs. He has a vision that goes back to the Monroe Doctrine that somehow or the other this Caribbean is part of an American lake, an American backyard, which frankly we do not accept. Grenada, that tiny little island, with Cuba at the west end of the Caribbean, Grenada at the east end, that tiny little island is building now, or having built for it, on its soil and shores, a naval base, a superior air base, storage bases and facilities for the storage of munitions, barracks and training grounds for the military. I'm sure all of that is simply to encourage the export of nutmeg. It isn't nutmeg that's at stake in the Caribbean and Central America. It is the United States national security. My government has consistently sought to establish and to maintain normal and mutually respectful relations with our powerful northern neighbor. It is an unfortunate historical fact that every effort on our part to achieve this has been ignored or rebuffed.
Grenada's military potential is unrelated to any conceivable threat to this island country of under 110,000 people. And totally at odds with the pattern of other Eastern Caribbean states, most of which are unarmed. The Caribbean is a very important passageway for our international commerce and military lines of communication. More than half of all American oil imports now pass through the Caribbean. The Cubans, with Soviet financing and backing, are in the process of building an airfield with a 10,000-foot runway. Grenada doesn't even have an air force. Who is it intended for? In exactly the same way that they have had to move to violent force against other popular progressive revolutions around the world. They are right now, right now, this very minute, sitting down and planning the final stages of their armed attack against our revolution. And all these uh, contacts you've had, to establish beyond all shadow of doubt that Grenada is not a threat to the security of the United States. I think even before I landed in the United States, that was established beyond any shadow of doubt, frankly. Um, as you remember, the main peg around which this alleged threat um, rested was the peg of the international airport. Now, following President Reagan's second um, speech attacking Grenada, the Star Wars speech on the 23rd of March, uh, an ABC television crew came down to Grenada, and they discovered that they didn't have to go up into a spy plane to take photographs, that they can just go to the airport site and take photographs. They discovered that right at the tip of the runway was a medical school with 700 young American students um, earning their right to become doctors that these young American students were running up and down the airport runway every day. It was their main jogging path. So as far as I am concerned, even before we got here, that particular piece of mythology had been blasted. But I would certainly hope that if there was any residue of doubt left, that the last 10 days would certainly have cleared up once and for all. Ironically, the greatest threat to Prime Minister Bishop came not from the U.S., but from his own colleagues. October 12, 1983. A radical faction of Bishop's party led by Bernard Cord and General Hudson Austin turned against him. They accused Bishop of being too moderate. He was placed under house arrest. But they had badly underestimated Bishop's support among the people of Grenada. October 19. The island was in an uproar. An angry crowd freed Bishop from house arrest as an amateur cameraman filmed the scene. assembled with Bishop at Fort Rupert, the Army's headquarters. But they were followed there by General Austin's troops. The troops opened fire on Bishop's supporters. Many died, and hundreds more threw themselves over the battlements, trying to escape the bullets. Bishop was lined up against this wall with seven of his colleagues. The sound of two long machine gun bursts signaled the end of his revolution. The People's Revolutionary Armed Forces have, as of 3 p.m. today, established a revolutionary military council. That our major task at this moment is to protect and defend our country against any attack by imperialism. Anyone who seeks to demonstrate or disturb the peace will be shot. <laughs> 